Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, ADHD and Attention Coach Jeff Copper, and we're here with today with Dr. Russell Barkley. Dr. Barkley, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good day, everybody. Um, we've already done a video on this, um, and we've talked about it, but I want to go in a little bit more depth with you, and that is the notion of working memory, those with ADHD, and, and kind of getting work done. And in working with many, or coaching many with ADHD, I will, I'll talk to them and they'll describe a situation where they're having to do some type of executive functioning and they get their head into it, which is akin to like opening your computer, booting it up, getting Word up, getting a document up and start typing. And when they get interrupted many times, it's like when they come back to their work, it's like their computer got unplugged and they have to reload all that information. And that's, that's what I see and that's what I describe. As you, in your role as a research and a clinician, is that a, a reasonable metaphor to help people understand sometimes what's happening to them when they're engaged in an executive function and they get distracted? Well, Jeff, I think it's an excellent metaphor because people understand what it means to have a computer and that your screen is your workspace yep. and that as you're working, you may have one or two or even three different programs or documents open that you're trying to blend together to create this new you know, email or project or, or uh, letter that you're writing. But nonetheless, you've got multiple things that you're holding in mind. In this case, you're holding them on your workspace, on your, on your desktop computer. And when someone distracts somebody with ADHD, uh, what you see is it's almost as if the workspace got wiped out or as you said that your computer has been turned off or let's just say it's frozen and now you have to start over but you've lost the workspace this is why distractions are so destructive to the work activity of people with ADHD because it literally is wiping off the workspace and now as you've said they have to start from scratch they have to reload all the information uh, and then get the documents open, find their place again where they were, try to remember what the sequence was they were trying to get down. And I think important to note here as well, is you've pointed out, there's an emotional side to this. It gets very frustrating. It can be very irritating if you have to keep starting over. You know what it's like when your computer goes down and you have to start over. I mean, there was a guy in the newspaper yesterday, you may have read, who shot his computer and was arrested <laughs> for firing a handgun within the uh -huh. city limits. Yep. And there's a picture on the internet of seven bullet holes in the guy's desktop <laughs> computer. But this is what happened. He got so fed up. So I, I like that idea that not only only is working memory like a workspace on a computer, but also that there's an emotional side to getting frustrated by the frequent distractions they have to deal with. And so when I'm working with, here's how this plays out every day is, is I've coached a couple of law, lawyers who have to sit down and kind of go through like a case. I mean, really a lot of executive functioning for kind of a couple hours and they sit down and kind of go do that and they get interrupted by somebody. And every time they keep coming back, it's like they have to start over. And as it continues for a long time, they get irritated and the emotional regulation kind of comes in and all of a sudden they start screaming, yelling, they get frustrated and irritating. And I say that because if you have ADHD, you know that, hey, what your experience is, is not on different than other people, but also if you're supporting somebody with ADHD, you too can probably identify with that and you can, can support them and realize is, is sometimes when they're involved in something that's, that requires a lot of executive function, to kind of abstain from inter interrupting them because effectively when you walk in, they kind of have to start over. The other thing too is that if you're working with somebody with ADHD, realize is that they can get very frustrated by that having to start over and over each time because it's 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 really kind of inefficient. Another area I see this shows up is 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 it's a tip, classical transition type thing. And imagine that you're working and you've got a lot of stuff that's going on. Maybe you're a sales guy and you pull that stuff and you go on vacation, and when you come back. All that stuff that you had going day to day effectively was your, your laptop. It's like it has to be rebooted and it takes you a day or two back in the office to kind of get your head back into the game and that can be very frustrated and very difficult for people in transitions. Now that's what I see it, how it manifests Dr. Barkley but I'm hearing that, that makes a lot of sense from the clinical side of what you've done. Uh, both the clinical and the research side and, and what it tells us as you're alluding to here is what you need to do to help them first of all they need to arrange for a lot less distractions around their workspace so that there's something they can do to move things away from the focus of their attention. So whether there's a computer game sitting nearby, you should never have an Xbox, for instance, <laughs> in the same room where you've got yep. work that you need to be doing. And you certainly shouldn't be having a TV on or anything like that. A little music in the background, you know, that, that uh, might be an instrumental or something that won't distract you. Second thing is you need to put a sign on your office door, do not interrupt. And you need to let other people you're working with or your family know if you're working at home, that when that sign is up, don't come into the room. And maybe even your loved ones can help you do that 
by putting the sign up for you when they know that you're going to work because they need to understand that the more they interrupt you, the harder it is for you not only to finish the project, but you're also going to become irritable, emotional. You may even quit. The project isn't going to get done. And now you've got the emotional aspects of relationships coming into play rather than just the problem of reduced productivity. So this is why we tell people when you're taking exams, when you're doing work, when you're in any situation that demands a lot of mental effort and executive functioning, you need to be doing this in as distraction-free an environment as possible, and you need other people to cooperate with that request. And so just just to kind of just, because we need to wrap this up for a second, but you can see how this kind of cascades is if you have to keep going back and rebooting your computer, you don't do it after a while, so that begins to look like procrastination. person gets frustrated and irritated, then the emotions kind of come out, we start having dealing with some of that. The one thing I will say is that if you become aware of this and you know what's kind of going on, it can be as simple as recognize it because quite frankly, a lot of people I coach, if they're going to go on vacation, they actually spend an hour before they go on vacation when they finish the work to kind of document maybe visuals and stuff like that to kind of give them clues when they come back. It makes it easier for them to reload their computer, kind of like a shortcut a little bit, because they realize is that they're going to lose all that working memory when they kind of come back. But again, they, they, little, little buzzwords and little types of things can help them get back there a little bit quicker. Great advice. So, uh, Dr. Barkley, I, well, I, I, I know this has been a great conversation for me and our, and our listeners. Um, I thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you. Take care, everybody.